Well, it was about six or seven years ago that I decided I wanted to make a DV feature, and everything went pretty good till I got to the editing, and that was the hard part. And after a year or two of a lot of frustration, I decided that I could put together some tutorials, the kind I wish I had when I started this, and maybe help out someone else who was at that same place. So that's what I did. You can go to dvmoviemaking.com and see what's on there. There's about five hours of editing with Adobe's Premiere Pro editing software and an hour or so where I talk about shooting with the DV camcorders. And here's a couple sample clips from that. Well, this looks a little confusing in here, doesn't it, with all these windows? Let's see if we can simplify this a bit. Uh, down here on the right, there's a couple of little ones, the info window and history. Let's just click on the X and get rid of these for now. Here's our tools. We'll close that. On the right side of most of these windows, you'll find something called a wing menu. It's a little triangle over there. From the monitor, we can go down to single view instead of dual view. In our project window, we're going to have a list of all the clips, whatever media we're using, and then we'll watch our program in the monitor window. And the timeline, that's where we're going to put it together. Now we've got video tracks, and below we've got the audio tracks. This is the edit line, or the CTI, the current time indicator. I like to just call it the edit line. If you click anywhere in the ruler, you see it'll jump right over to that spot. And if you're down here on the tracks, you can pull it along. And this is something called the work area bar, and we'll want to spread this out over a portion of our program that will need to be rendered or processed, and we'll talk more about that. Right now, I just want you to get familiar with the look of these windows in the program. We can select one of these clips, and up in this little preview area, we can play it, uh, we can scrub through it, but we want to get this down on our timeline. So let's hold down on the mouse, Drag it down here, decide which track you want to put it on, and then release the mouse. First, we'd want to look through the clips and figure out which shots we want to keep. Now, this will be easier to do if we zoom in a bit, and I'll use the viewing area bar now, but try to use your plus and minus keys. I think there's a shot before this one. We don't want that. Let's start our first shot right about here. I can just go down to the beginning of the clip, hold down on the mouse, and drag in, and there's our end point. Now I'll pull the edit line along. I think it changes to another shot right there. Let's back up. Okay, this will be our out point. We can hit C on the keyboard, get that razor tool, and then back to V for the pointer. And for our last shot, we'll have it start right about here. This time I'll hold down control as we drag in. The ripples back. And three seconds of this, well, we just have enough. We'll pull in on the right side. Okay, let's look at this a little closer. We want to zoom in. But remember, you zoom in around your edit line. So it's best to set that edit line in the area that you want to see. Then when you zoom in, you'll be right there. With this last group, we have the girls in the first two shots. And he's at the end. Well, we want to put him in the middle. And we could move him around individually like this. This would be the slow way to do it. Or let's undo all these moves. Now, if we hold control as we pull this clip out, we're doing an extract till we release it over here. And now we did it in one move. Now, there are a couple different ways to add transitions in your sequence, and we'll go into this in detail. But right now, we're going to overlap two clips on adjacent tracks, and we'll place the transition on the clip that's on top. Now, we'd want to drag in on this side of the transition to the overlap. Then, if we click in the ruler and pull the edit line across, we can see the dissolve. I prefer to do an audio fade at a constant rate until almost the end, and then have it fade at a little slower rate. Well, we can't use the crossfade for this, but we can set some handles or keyframes right there in our clips and adjust the volume with those. To set those handles, we will have to click P to get the pen tool. And this would drag the whole volume down, but if we hold control and then click on this line, we'll set these little handles, put three of them here, and then you can let go of control and adjust these separately. 
will fade out a little faster here and a little slower to the end. And now we can play it. <laughs> 